carry away the loot and to serve as child soldiers and sex slaves. Nursing mothers whose babies slowed up the progress or who simply cried too loudly, saw them killed or thrown into the bush and left behind. The ICC brought charges against Ongwen, Joseph Kony and four others who are believed dead in 2005. Ongwen gave himself up to U.S. troops last January after a decade on the run, fearing for his life after falling out with Kony, who is still at large. The trial of Dominic Ongwen opens as the International Criminal Court faces the biggest crisis in its 15-year history, with several member states quitting over claims it unfairly singles out Africans for prosecution. Execution. For the ICC, the start of the trial is a rare positive, coming after South Africa and Gambia announced their withdrawal from the court over allegations of anti-African bias and amid criticism from President Rodrigo Duterte of the Philippines, one of the court's few Asian members. Trix Ingado, KT News, Nairobi. All right, so like we told you at the start of this show, this morning Kenya joins the rest of the world in marking International Volunteers Day. A cabinet memo from October 13th this year approved a half-day celebration of Kenyans who commit their time, skills and resources in the spirit of promoting volunteerism. The theme for this year's International Volunteer Day is Together We Can. So let's talk a little bit more about this. And I have international, local, but all of them volunteers today. Thanks very much for joining us. On my extreme right, Dimitri Lermit. We have Abraham Maker and Andrew Onyango. Thank you, gentlemen, for coming in uh, to speak with us today. So let me start with you, Dimitri. This is an important day that it gets UN recognition. Why it, is that? It is indeed. Uh, the UN IVD Day, International Volunteers Day, is yeah. annually celebrated the 5th of December. Mm -hmm every year and it's a UN designated day that means that it's uh, globally ce celebrated yeah. by everybody who's engaged in volunteerism right. so it doesn't have to be UNV it could be VSO but it also could be local regional communities that are engaging in informal volunteerism within their local communities mm -hmm. uh, far away in the field yeah so let's talk about volunteerism uh, Abraham so perhaps these are all the things that we talk about when we, or think about when we think of volunteers. It's something you do in your gap year between school, and, you know, uh, for young people. So demystify volunteerism for us and perhaps define it if you can. Well, uh, thank you very much. You know, volunteerism is not really seen as something you can do as uh, an intern mm -hmm. or somebody who has nothing to do. All these volunteers are professionals who have actually given up their times, their resources, they come and, you know, give their service to the community, especially they go down to the villages, down to the community level, they interact and they see how they can really help the people. So volunteerism is not what people see it outside, it's something that comes from your heart, mm -hmm. the commitment, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and that zeal that you really want to make a change. Yeah. And we are actually driven by uh, um, inspiration through development. Mm -hmm. You go at will. Nobody forces you. Right. You just do it. Right. Going yeah. at will, no one forces you. And it's not the thing you do when you have nothing better to do with your no. time. Isn't that no. right, Andrew? Yeah. No, not yeah. at all. Um, it's definitely a huge learning opportunity as well. Uh, beyond doing it because it's something that defeats the human soul. Uh, it's also a chance to get actively involved in things you regularly would be involved in, even within your own community. Uh, taking into account, like personally, I work with the IBC. So it's about learning how the electoral cycle works. These are things that I've never interacted with. So it's me bringing my expertise, but also learning what, what exactly goes into putting all this together. All right, and it's interesting that you mention that because I think also another myth that we have is volunteerism happens in, in times of crisis, disaster. Mm. Uh, Dimitri, clearly, uh, no. you know, there's, there's lots to be done in the community. True, true, true. And 
Um, being innovative for us, definitely in the volunteer sector, is critical. We really have to see how we can fit in in an evolving world. Just to give you an example, uh, Kenya is, is a devolving country. Governance is being devolved to counties, and we recently concluded uh, an input of more than 40 national volunteers at county level to bring skills on board that are initially lacking. So it's not always dealing with crisis or humanitarian matters. Uh, it definitely has innovative ways of approaching development matters. Mm. So. Um then could you tell us about uh, the theme for this year and and you know why it's important i know i did the thumbs up sign which is great because it looks like i'm Thank in with you. the theme so sure. tell us some more about you know the focus this year this year's focus is on global applause uh, just to give you an idea in kenya formal informal and non-formal forms of volunteerism are estimated to bring economically more than 10 percent of gdp can you imagine that in this country, yeah. and we talk about billions of shillings. Right. Yes. So how do you sort of recognize that element? And we only talk about the economic aspect, so let alone that you would have the social, social impact, spirit, social impact right. exactly. So recognizing it through, through uh, you know, larger means is essential. And what more can you do with your hands? You can give a thumbs up, mm -hmm. you can give a fee sign, you can, can clap, okay. or you can shake hands. Right. So it's very simple, and you can do it anywhere, anytime, mm -hmm. where you want. We ourselves, as UNV, we set up today a social media campaign to treat as much as possible. And afterwards, we're going to definitely ask you as well to, yeah. to engage with others in sure. a tweet. No. But um, it, it's for us, it's very important that we try to find ways of easily communicating, getting across to the co communities that we want. Mm -hmm. Youth in this country is very essential. Mm -hmm. We need to go, you know, with a bit of an appealing campaign, not yeah. a boring old type of yeah. uh, communication <laughs> way. That's true. So and and social media definitely uh, are one of the ways that we want to see and yeah. and uh, and go by. Okay, so how do I get to be a volunteer, Abraham? I mean, you know, so I want to volunteer. I have, I have time, I have skills, uh, and I want to do that. Where do I even begin? Well, there are very many ways you can do it. Um, you can do it in your community where you stay. There is also an online volunteer at your free time. Of course, you're busy in the studio, but. When you go home and you yeah. just need to do something, you yeah. get online. Yeah. You do online volunteer. Is this what you're calling the informal one? Well, Where I, you know, I can just you know go to my community and start to give yes. you know of my exactly. time and my contribution. Exactly, exactly. You okay. you really contribute to your community right. informally. Yeah. But at the same time, you can also get engaged into online volunteerism where right. you can interact with those who really need to know what volunteerism is. I see. And then uh, for if you really need to give much of your time, you can also register online go for international service. You can also serve in your own country. Uh -huh. You can serve in another country. Okay. It's possible. All right. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So there's the formal and the informal. But surely you can start anywhere, anyway. even before you start to go yeah. online and get yeah. onto these yeah. uh, communities. So uh, a bit of a personal question, Andrew. So you're volunteering with the IBC. Mm -hmm. What on earth drove you to do that? Um, you're a young man. You could be making money. Uh, there's lots of um, as they say, and I'll put it in quotes, important things you could be doing with your time. But you choose to do this. Why? It's about participation. Um, as I earlier said, uh, there's a lot of things I don't understand about how government works, mm -hmm. how the electoral cycle works. And I'm one of those people who needs to learn through immersion. And one of the easiest ways is to immerse myself fully in the electoral cycle. Mm -hmm. Um, participating in civic education, voter education, right. understanding these structures, understanding the structure of the IBC, it's been an eye-opening experience mm -hmm. for me. And that's why I went purposely towards that direction, because I want to understand that particular arm okay. of how things and then, work. And then what? So now, let's say you get to the point, you have full understanding. What then will you do with this knowledge, with this information that you have gained? Um, do we hope to see you volunteering through the electioneering period in Kenya? Yes, that, okay. that is the hope to volunteer throughout the entire electioneering period. Right. Um, but what, to speak about what I would do with this information, mm -hmm. it can always be disseminated further. Right. There's always more Kenyans who need yeah. to understand how these things work. Yeah. And that, in essence, for me, it's looking at it and saying, this is easily a career that's already been built, uh -huh. whereby you spend a lifetime yeah. helping other Kenyans be empowered. Yeah. I think that generally speaks for itself as an ambition. Okay, all right, yeah, and that's a good place uh, to have your final thoughts. Abraham, I'll give you a, a moment also, and then we'll come to you, Dimitri. Just your final thoughts on why this is important, um, and you know, how we can all get ourselves in there. Do I just walk to the UN and say hi? 
I want to volunteer. <laughs> you can well, give us some uh, thank you very much. You know, um, it comes in your heart. Yeah. And I started when I was 16 years in yeah. my country. And we used to move on foot from village to village. And we used to do a campaign against uh, polio. Mm -hmm. We used to do EPI services. Yeah. So at the end of the day, you really feel that you've given to your community. And um, <clears throat> before I came to Kenya, I was working for the UN in South Sudan. But I had a feeling that something is missing. I really need to give to the community, either in my country or any other part of the world. I had to resign in my job, and I came here to work. So anytime you feel like to do it, even here you can just leave your job and say, I want to go and volunteer okay. and help the people. At the end of the day, when you see the change, yeah. for example, if you are focusing on uh, nutrition, mm -hmm. and you see a community has changed from giving a child something, and then they focus on exclusive breastfeeding, breastfeeding. Yeah you really feel that something has happened and mm. you have that pride in you and be very happy that something has changed. And there's no feeling like that in the world, is there? Of course, it's no, not there. No but amount of money can, can, <laughs> can give you that same feeling. Of view, course, of course. Right? Money cannot really bring happiness. Absolutely. Unless you have achieved something, you really feel that I have done something. Great. And you have that peace in you. All right, thanks, yeah. thanks for that, Abram. Yeah. Dimitri, final words? Well, I just want to say Kenya has a unique situation for UNV. We have the largest United Nations volunteer scheme in the world in the development setting. And the reason is very simple. Mm -hmm. Kenya has a number of elements that bring people to the table to bring innovation. There's openness, there's communication, internet is great. There's highly skilled uh, 